army what's going on everybody welcome back my name is johnny and uh ladies and gentlemen today we gather the troops and we head back to the beautiful land of bts and we're checking out a video called bts versus k-pop a video essay this is by creator named baby gang mag um i actually reached out to them on twitter i asked for permission and i got the go ahead to make this video for y'all um but before we do anything you know we got to give them some love this is actually a, a very heartfelt project, so it seems, based off these comments over here. So what I want y'all to do is go down in the description. I got a link to the channel, Baby Gang Mag. I got that down below. I got a link to the video too. Um, if you can do me a favor, go over there, hit the subscribe button for them, go to the video, give it a quick little view, thumbs up, go do all that good stuff. If you're done with that, come on back over here, hit that subscribe button for me too before we get started. Um, don't really know much about this based off the comments. Uh, for example, this top one says, everybody's already compliment, complimented this for its depth and excellent research. So we'll just say that I laugh at the height difference between the sick figure Namjoon and sick figure Yugi. So we got some, we got some uh, good stuff coming up here. But with that said, we are ready to rock and roll. Let's talk more rock, baby. Let's check this out. Let's make sure our volume's good. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, BTS versus K-pop, a video essay. What's up? I'm gonna talk about BTS again. It's time for a <laughs> video essay. BTS versus K-pop. So BTS are really big. They're really True. big. They're big beyond the imagined constraints that groups like theirs are meant to reach. They've shattered numerous records for South Korean artists, including easily breaking the record SNL for the right selling South Korean album with a seven track EP that came out less than a year ago called Map of the Soul Persona. According to the Hollywood Reporter, they account for almost $5 billion of the South Korean economy, Ooh. rivaling the value of that of Samsung and Hyundai. Those Yo. are multinational, multi billion dollar corporations being rivaled by a six year old music group <laughs> from an indie entertainment company and in oh, response yeah. the rest of the world is confused as f their fans <laughs> i swear to you it's like the beatles have like lazarus just risen from the dead like their <sighs> people are Nap of really the soul, which has already had three million <laughs> we have some very big fans right outside the studio American today culture. Culture. <laughs> like millions of like let's make Holy a million, shit. like a million retweets and just a beaver beeps K-pop is a genre of music, and in order to be a K-pop artist, you got to go through K-pop college, and that's actually a real thing. It's understandable that people would be wait. K-pop college is that actually a real thing, or is that hyperbole? Let's find out. Baby gang, tell us. Confused. Take us to the promised Outlet, land. A music group whose primary language is Korean dominate international markets to the point of being the best-selling record globally in 2019 with one EP that had one <laughs> single. In order to understand yeah. at least well enough how BTS became this big, you'd have to have an understanding of South Korean history, the South Korean music industry, international hip hop, and social media fandom at the least. And most publications either aren't able to gain these understandings or don't care to. Let's say weirdly we've got China to thank for it. The hell? So instead, what? most of the conversation focuses <laughs> on one ostensibly understandable part of BTS's identity, K-pop. I mean, after all, BTS are a K-pop group. Hell yeah. Right? Maybe? I think? You can't get a true <laughs> understanding about BTS's rise to success without understanding the world they came from, which is K-pop. The problem is, most people don't understand K-pop or BTS as much as they think they do. What do you Even I don't, and I've been diving into this for quite a bit now, and I still don't know shit. So let's see, let's get schooled, baby. What do you think when you think of K-pop, casual audience member? I'd guess you think of screaming teenage girls, perfect looks and choreography, simple English hooks, and of course that spooky underbelly that every magazine and their mama has lined up to cover over the years. There are two problems with this. One, BTS have succeeded in great part due to their divergence from these common K-pop qualities. But when BTS and their success are constantly grouped in with K-pop by Western media, the people being introduced to them who only know those things are going to think that BTS success comes down to those things, which mm. could be further from the truth. <clears throat> it still isn't really true. And two, K-pop is a lot more complicated than the ideas everyone has of it. Even 
No, that's true. That is very true. Damn, I've learned so much, but this is on point. Hell yeah. And the people that study and discuss Korean music disagree on their definitions of what K-pop is and what the term K-pop even means. I've been tangentially in the media industry Ooh, for a big word. less than two years and <laughs> covering BTS for less than a year, less than half a year. And uh, I'm here to tell you that the media industry is not covering BTS as well as they should in the West. I started a Twitter account with the goal of explaining these topics in a form that blends journalism and social media. It's a Twitter account called TY But Disagree. Today we're launching the first oh, thank episode you, but of the TY ah, But cool. Disagree video series hosted right here on Baby Gang, my YouTube channel and fake media company. Baby Depending Gang! It's confusing, it doesn't matter. Here's what matters. Today we're going to talk about BTS in relation to K-pop. We're going to learn about what K-pop is, what BTS are, and whether or not BTS are even a K-pop group in the first place. Cool. And before you close this video and dismiss that question as absurd, I assure you, this stuff is way more nuanced than you think it is. Alright, hell what, yeah, baby, let's what go. What is K-pop? Is K-pop a genre or an industry? Ooh. Yes. Good question. Or no. A 2017 article by TK Park on his popular blog, Ask a Korean, entitled K-pop is not a genre, asserts that the term loosely only refers to popular music of Korea, which of course includes many types of genres and labels. Park mentions the rock group FT Island and the solo crooner IU. These two artists yeah, check make those out styles too. of music but can both be classified as K-pop. Therefore, K-pop can't be a genre, but more of a generalized classification. Simple enough, right? Interesting. Well, no. It's important to remember that genre classification in general does not strictly refer to- Look at all the- holy shit! That is neat. I would like to see a, a high quality version of this picture. That is neat. Hell yeah. Refer to musical stylings. At least this is the assertion held in a response article by Lizzie Parker at the blog Beyond Hall You from the same year entitled Is K-pop a genre? Yes. Yes, it is. That's the title. I didn't. <laughs> Parker does not. This guy's funny. This guy's really funny. I'm glad I <laughs> I'm glad we're checking this out. Entirely throw out Park's valid assertion that K-pop is a loose Kiki. classification, meaning popular music of Korea, but contends that this makes it a genre all the same, as all genre classifications have this same looseness. Quote, no one actually uses genres to make concrete, definitive lists of specific kinds of music. They're relational terms we use so we can form an understanding of a piece of music, often before we have listened to it, in relation to our existing cultural reference points, and further understand our and others' enjoyment, or lack thereof. As an example, the pop genre is the messiest classification you can imagine. Louis Capaldi and Lizzo both have two of the top songs on pop charts right now, as of my making this video, but one of them makes sad white boy folk pop, <laughs> and another one of them makes uh funk soul and disco adjacent rap music wow pop that artists. is that is that is very definitive that is a lot of adjectives okay it's in that they employ accessible music qualities they have catchy melodies they've got accessible time signatures conventional mixes accessible but time signatures conventional mixes this is dude these are some great terms you're gonna hear both of those in upcoming videos but from a technical standpoint and from a cultural standpoint, they couldn't be any more different from each other. Both authors make valid points. Given that K-pop basically means Korean pop, that means that this sloppy genre classification still qualifies in a way. The only difference is the subcategorization of this music being primarily or entirely created and marketed by the Korean music industry, mostly in the Korean language and mostly performed by Koreans or people of Korean descent. In the United States, genre classification okay. has strong ties to racial and cultural barriers. As described by the musicologist Robert Fink in a PS Mag piece by Jack Denton, quote, The way genre works is to create categories that are partly musical, but also have a lot to do with the perceived identity of the artists and the target oh, market. This could partially explain why K-pop is such a prevalent term in the United States, but is by many accounts used far less in Korea. Instead, the term idol music is used to describe what Americans uh, typically use K-pop, as in the groups and solo acts who create hybridized Korean songs with Western pop music qualities and usually present with precise choreography and makeup. Now that we've deconstructed the term K-pop a little bit, let's talk about what idol music is and where it came from. In order to do that, 
a brief history of music in South Korea. <laughs> Here we go. For Let's go, up baby. Until the late 1800s, Korean culture was shaped by Sinocentrist ideals, deeply influenced by their proximity and allyship with China. This led to the preeminence of Korean Confucianism. We're going all the way back to Confucius. Holy shit. Okay. Which entailed the emphasis on things like a stringent wow. shared moral code in social situations, a respect for elders, and a necessitation of ritualism. Those rituals extend to the traditional music styles of Korea, works which followed a pentatonic music scale involved pentatonic that's a group too i think they did a song with uh at's if i'm mistaken chinese derived instruments and garb and included genres like pansori which is a type of storytelling via vibrato heavy open-throated pentatonic scale singing these styles of music involved very conservative performances the body is still the clothes are unrevealing of any flesh the lyrics were even oriented towards Confucian ideals of family and morality. Japanese oh, rule over Korea led greatly to the introduction of Western styles of music, particularly classical styles and even balladic styles that translate more directly into modern pop music. Then after World War II, Japanese rule over Korea ended and Western artistic influences came from the United States more than anything, especially through the brief and turbulent period of American occupation. Things ebbed and flowed and changed over the decades. South Korean audiences became more and more appreciative of Western sounds, particularly as the television and the karaoke machine grew to become highly popular and as the economy improved. Hip hop became a phenomenon in the West during the 80s, and it's hey, run DMC, baby. the world. Satejian Boys debuted in 1990 and completely abandoned pentatonic scale structure. We are checking that out. We are 100% checking that out. Hell yeah. Gotta look, gotta look on the history, baby. Gotta know where you're coming from. Making full use of diatonic hip hop, rock, and pop sounds. They also incorporated dancing, which had been utilized successfully by artists like Sobang Cha before them. They weren't the first to do these things they did, but they were the most influential, particularly in how they synthesized these elements, how they reformed the conventional music TV formats and other music formats, how they built a really strong fan base of young people, and their overall explosive entry into the Korean music industry signaled a change in things to come. So Teji and Boys, by the way, were pretty badass. They wrote their own stuff and they played their own instruments, and despite their music not carrying the same leftist ideals necessarily that previous attempts at Western music had in South Korea, they were still unafraid to challenge status quo and older generations in a very un-Confucian way. Notably, in 1988, cool. South Korea lifted travel restrictions on its citizens. After Soteji, westernization in Korean pop music accelerated quickly, with the rise of groups like H.O.T., who are considered the first idol group as they were the first to be scouted. Make a note of that if I forget. We're checking out H.O.T. too. Trained and put together to become a hit boy band, as well as the rise of Korean dramas like the big 2002 hit Winter Sonata, a sudden drastic and ongoing increase of intrigue in South Korean culture and art began globally. This phenomenon is referred to as Hallyu. As a Hallyu. side note, I recommend that those interested in Hallyu read Kim buk Past, Present, and Future of Hallyu paper, as well as John Lee's What is the K and K-Pop, which greatly informed this history section of the essay that I'm doing. Uh, in the former, Kim states the following, of Hallyu and its Ooh. focus on decentralizing Western culture by adapting it. Quote, under the current circumstances, the Hallyu boom is emerging in the modernized slash industrialized East Asia where people with an economic power have a strong desire to be the cognitive subjects of their cultural activities. In this context, Hallyu can no longer be considered a simple cultural acculturation, but mm. a transcultural phenomenon or a process of cultural power reorganization through the complex slash dynamic movements of people, mass medias, and transnational capitals. Hold on. Let me let me just soak this in. In this context, all you can no longer be considered a simple cultural ac a culture a culture <laughs> acculturation. Jesus, uh, but a transcultural uh, phenomenon or a process of cultural. Can I not say cultural? Do I not have the cultural cultural? I can say that transcultural, a cultural a culture a culture. Okay, acculturation. I have a hard time with. <sighs> I ain't working uh, through uh, uh, or a process of cultural power reorganization through the complex dynamic movements of people, mass medias, and transnational capitals. Okay. Right, here we go. Thanks to this eventual embrace and aim for perfection in the realm of popular Western forms, South Korea's economy is boosted drastically year by year by its cultural exports. <laughs> Understanding Korean history teaches us a few things. One, that Korean culture is divided between past and present, between Western ideals and the remnants of Confucianist, Sinocentric ideals. While South Korean society still retains these Abba. moral codes and customs related to respect and ritualism, it's also being pulled quickly in the direction of more liberal, rebellious, anti-traditional ideas. In part, because
because these ideas are fueling boosts to the country's economy. This conflict manifests in the music itself and the music industry, which is very dead. This is a this is a Korean music video. The country's economy. This conflict manifests oh, in the music cool. itself in the music industry, which is very dead set on upholding certain traditions and approaches while using art forms like hip hop that are built on anti establishment, anti ritual values. This creates a tension within the music that is ironically uniquely Korean, despite <laughs> the fact that your average K pop song bears little resemblance to anything that existed in Korea before the 20th century. Thusly, it teaches okay. us that K pop is more than just a genre or an industry, it is a cultural export and somewhat antagonistically to the people who make money from k-pop a progressive cultural movement in a way additionally okay. k-pop is not just a genre or an industry specifically but a format where music of various genres comes with a dance slash visuals package so yes k-pop is a genre in a way because it speaks to a direct social cultural concept that relates to what we understand basically is Hallyu and the underpinnings of South Korean society shifting as it balances the traditional with the progressive, the old and the new, both of which can be debated as potentially more expedient than expressive. What's funny- I would even say maybe K-pop in itself is a culture, right? Maybe a subset of culture. But I guess it's, it's so fluid that it can't really be defined in one way, which I guess is what he's saying too. So. And unsurprising is that the artists that seem to shirk conventionality and tradition the most against the grain of what makes up most of this genre that's supposed to be export friendly are the ones that become the most successful and the most exported. That can be said of Soteji and it can be said of Sai, who very much did not. I totally forgot about Sai. Wow. Holy crap. Remember that? Remember that? Remember when Sai was a thing? I'm, I'm sure he's still like really big, but. <laughs> there was a period of time where you couldn't get Gangnam Style out of your head. Look Jeez. or sound like the hotties you'd see in H.O.T., but still absolutely shattered the international music market with 2012's Gangnam Style, a song Gangnam. which, true cool. story, is actually a commentary about the nouveau riche young Koreans attempting to flex their material wealth and coolness like the kids in the city of Gangnam. It's basically the dance craze EDM <laughs> version of Beverly Hills by Weezer. So yeah, um, <laughs> so Teji and his boys. This guy's really smart. This guy's really smart. He has a very good grasp of the music industry as a whole. I like this. Uh, don't forget the boys. They succeeded from shirking conventionality, and then Psy succeeded from shirking conventionality, and um, hmm, am I forgetting somebody? Part two. Who are BTS <laughs> and why are they so big? Okay, so, so Teji and Boy's debut. They make Korean pop rap a thing, they become hugely influential, and then Lee Soo Man, president of SM Entertainment, realizes that black music is going to be a key to constructing K-pop in the image of Soteji and others, so he scouts an attractive boy band that blends sex appeal with hip-hop and calls it H.O.T. H.O.T. succeeds and soon floods of boy groups and girl groups follow to- Imagine, very imagine coming across somebody that wore these kind of outfits now. You'd think they were absolutely crazy. The style's crazy, man. Degrees of success, what a world we live often in. paired with behind the scenes controversies, van <clears throat> wars, slave contracts, and everyone's favorite subject of Twitter arguments, cultural <laughs> appropriation. Hip hop becomes super popular in Korea as fans of the genre and culture devise new ways in which the Korean language can be bent into rap music without sounding awkward or overly imitative of Americans and the uncomfortable ideas Korean society had of black American culture. Yikes. To thank oh, the shit. Have OGs like oh, shit. and Tiger JK of Drunken Tiger. Tiger JK! Hey, I actually came across Tiger JK and Drunken Tiger when I was like 11 or 12 pirating music off Napster and I heard Drunken Tiger. So I guess I was introduced to Korean music 27 years ago, but one day, one day we'll revisit. One day we'll revisit. I'll, sh I'll show you where I come from. You know what I mean? But you also have Epic High to think, led by Korean Canadian rapper and Stanford graduate Tableau. Fuck you if you don't think he graduated from Stanford. Epic High became <laughs> successful not only in hip hop subcultural circles, but also in the mainstream eye. In the midst of this booming new K pop music industry, and by K pop, I do mean idol music, as well as the rise of rap music in the mainstream, a successful idol music producer named Punk C oh, right. starts his own record label in 2005 called Big Hit Entertainment. The label struggles with money but stays afloat by working with different groups. In 2010, one of Big Hit's producers, P Dog, and an underground rapper named Sleepy are drunk. Sleepy says to P Dog, Hey, bro, do you want to see this teenage rapper I found in an audition? He's pretty dope. And P Dog says, Bro, yes. So Sleepy <laughs> finds his underground Korean rap videos of this one 16 year old kid named Kim Nam Chun. P Dog is like, hey. Bro, he's dope. And Sleepy is like, Bro, I told you. And then P Dog decides to tell Pang about Kim Nam Chun. And then Pang is like, Holy cow, he's dope. 
it. And P Dog is like, I told you. And Pac is like, shut up, I'm your boss. And P Dog is like, yes, I'm sorry, Mr. Pac. And Pac is like, bring this kid in immediately to audition for my label. So Nam Chun comes in, he does the audition, Pong is blown away, and he signs him on the spot. Now the problem is this is, this is the stick figures we were talking about in the comments. Pong doesn't know what to do with this kid. He knows he's the real deal and is devoted to making him part of a bigger project to get him famous. And so he decides, I'm going to put Namjoon in a rap group, like Epic High. So they start holding auditions for rappers and a bunch of them come and go. The second audition, which contained a video cattle call that has since become an infamous meme, brought in the group's second <laughs> rapper, Min Yoongi, aka Suga. Hey. As time evolves, the idea morphs from being a rap group to being a rap-centric idol group. Super and uh, short, Suga, Suga and Namjoon realize that they have to dance, which, um, which probably sucked for them. What you have to understand about Big Hit is that they were a small company, really small. They would never be able to compete on the level of big labels like SM and YG who would cherry pick amazing talent, offer them the best potential rewards, and put them in a well-resourced, regimented training system. Big Hit had no trainee system in place when they brought in Namjoon and scraped by to create one. Bro okay, that was, that was probably what they referred to like K-pop school, K-pop class was the, uh, the training. Idol training, right? That's probably what he meant. Added more members and adapted with what they had. There are many clips and pics online from this time period, which include the group's <laughs> senior member, Chin, paying for the youngest member, Chungguk's food out of his pocket instead of from funding they had from Big Hit, which was quite low. When it was finally wow. time for BTS to debut, their act was sharpened and had resolve. They were going to wear dark clothes and do lots of acrobatics and shouts on stage. Woo! They were going to critique Korean society based on their own feelings and influences from groups like Epic High as encouraged by Pang and as part of Big Hit's mantra of music for healing. They were going to film themselves a lot, capturing their struggle to get better from the beginning. Their second ever reality show featured the group heading to Los Angeles to get drilled on hip hop culture, which was to be a fulcrum of their ethos. So how did this group succeed so much more? Wait, what, what is this show from? Does anybody know what the show's from? Which was to be a fulcrum of their ethos. So how did this group succeed so much more than any other big group before them? Generally, I'd say it's because they blended the subversive, progressive virality of acts like Sotegian Boys and Psy with the well-trained dynamism of big groups like Big Bang and EXO. But perhaps more importantly, BTS, um, intentionally and inadvertently, had an ethos. Being a fan of BTS meant sharing in that ethos. BTS and Big Hit pushed music for healing. Each of their records have messages, implicit and explicit, which encourage Very social true. change, respect, and self-healing. Their first ever series of albums, known as the School Series, tackled the commodification of dreams and the pressure from older generations. Themes that would later surface in anti-establishment anthems like Bepsay and Paradise. Bepsay. Or take the later Love Yourself album series as another example. The self-explanatory title bridges together a conceptualized album trilogy by the group which delved into themes of self-love and exploration of identity and bear in mind that this kind of stuff the trilogies the thematic no. lines that's stuff that hadn't really been done in this format at all prior to bts wow so actual influential moving forward these albums were not literally really setting the bar to appeal to young audiences but to guide young audiences to happier healthier lives and in this way bts perfectly called to the duality we see in the history of k-pop blending the exportable western ideals of progressivism That's so cool and rebellion with the confucian ideals of respect and patience and morality this is why older audiences as well as non-female audiences also highly approve of bts especially it's your boy hey. in korea they don't see the same facetiousness or consumerism in BTS's methodology. The general quality that gets brought up is authenticity or organicness, which are at their very, true. very confusing and toxic words, but still feel apropos in describing the unique quality of BTS. Let's look at another article written by the aforementioned TK Park alongside author Young Day Kim. It examines the boy band label given to BTS and how BTS compare with other boy bands throughout history, saying this of their organic status, quote, BTS's music comes across as organic because it is a natural output of the members' own minds. It is not a coincidence that BTS began their musical journey with hip-hop, the genre that perhaps has the highest bar for authenticity. Lead rapper Kim Namjoon. Hey, that's a good point. Lyrics. So does Suga, who also produces. So does J-Hope, who also produces. And the rest of the group, all vocalists, all contribute to the creative process in their own ways as well. But BTS not only have a message and an independent spirit and a creative vitality, 
They also have a little engine that could story. <laughs> tale about this one under-resourced group that stuck to their guns and ended up succeeding past all of the other much more well-resourced, richer, more conventional groups. It's also worth noting that BTS's fan base is incredibly culturally and demographically diverse in general. It includes all genders, all sexual orientations, and all age groups. That's not to say that there aren't fans of other groups from all demographics, it just doesn't split quite as evenly as BTS's fanbase does, usually. You see tweets from older married couples excitedly ruminating on seeing BTS live for the first time. <laughs> These dynamics are not only unprecedented within K-pop, they're un- I totally thought she was just gonna- never mind, I thought she was gonna like, kiss my- never mind. Unprecedented to any boy band anywhere in the world, perhaps including the Beatles whose pop work and more subversive work mostly engaged younger and artsier audiences, while BTS appealed to all age groups and interest groups. When you simply label true. BTS as a K-pop group, or as a boy band, and then paint their fan bases, sex-crazed young women whose attraction to the group stems from physical attraction and <laughs> general excitement and hysteria, <laughs> you not only are sort of painting a bad image about young women in general and their tastes, but you're also missing a key component of why the group is successful. So if labeling BTS as a K-pop group isn't wholly accurate, is it accurate at all? Part Ooh. three, conclusion. Are Very good question. Very good question. Now I'm, now I'm doubting my own like categorization of BTS and other groups too. This is, this is good, dude. Make sure y'all go down, give this dude some love. Baby gang mag. Link to their channel down below. Go give them some love for sure. Are BTS a K-pop group? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're a K-pop group. At least I think so. You might notice that I am uh, doing this a bit different from the rest of the video. Um, that's because I recorded this part a few days after the original video was recorded because I wanted to redo this part and make sure that I worded it correctly, make sure that I, you know, came off the way that I wanted to come off and articulated the points that I wanted to articulate. At the end of the day, this is a pretty nuanced conversation, one that different people are going to stand on different sides of, and I don't take issue with anybody saying that BTS aren't a K-pop group because categorization is pretty dumb and up to anybody to you know decide and also i think you know it's it's pretty refreshing to hear that people want to take bts and their achievements and 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 put it in its own category that's a beautiful thing in a way i just think for one when you look at what bts have done from the fact that they came from the k-pop industry that they accept idol as a title and they you know made it the center of one of their songs one of their hits idol and the fact that they've done <laughs> you know reality shows and variety shows first doing them on the network shows and then doing them on their own the fact that they have you know similar release strategies to k-pop groups and how much output they do the way that they combine different styles of music i mean they have their own blend of it but it's still a blend that pretty much resembles k-pop in a lot of ways the fact that they sing in Korean, the fact that they, you know, are in the same category when it comes to award shows and nominations as somebody like EXO or somebody like Blackpink. You know, they just swept all the desangs this past, you know, season. I think ultimately what BTS do is take... By the way, this video I think is made in 2020. Yeah, so this video is like a year and a half old. So that's what he's referring to when you think of the season. The format and the ideas of K-pop like and rearrange them and, and edit them and elevate them in many ways. They don't represent a different category altogether from K-pop to me. They represent a new horizon for it. They represent somebody pushing the boundaries of I it like that. And, and opening up the definition of K-pop and, and blazing a new trail for different artists who want to do K-pop to see what they did and learn from them. They're changing the definition a little bit and they're opening it up, but they're not necessarily separating themselves entirely from K-pop. I think ultimately what the problem is here is not necessarily totally whether or not agree. you can classify BTS as K-pop, because like, sure, you can. The problem is that people are so predisposed to categorizing them as K-pop before anything else. The problem is that people want to wash over the unique elements of the things that they do 
in order to just classify them as a K-pop group and attribute all their success and their glory to that. That's not fair and that's not smart. It's not smart even when you do it with other groups that have pushed the boundaries of K-pop, like a Soteji or like a Seventeen who write and produce their own music, like a G Seventeen who are similar, we'll like check them out recently. who does amazing conceptual work as well. I think that these people are not necessarily separate from K-pop, but you can classify them as so many more things than K-pop. You can classify BTS ultimately as a pop group or a pop rap group or whatever before you classify them as K-pop because they belong in the same category as someone like Taylor Swift or someone like Halsey who greatly respects and admires them or Ariana Grande or Billie Eilish. I mean, these are the kind of artists that BTS find themselves in the same level of global success as. They're the type of artists that ultimately BTS are similar to in many ways and yet because they're Korean and because K-pop is a part of their identity, it pretty much dominates the conversation unfairly. We we are very This he's he's so well spoken. He's so well spoken. I'm a very big fan of this young man now. Holy crap. Let's go. Easy going when it comes to classifying people regionally when they come from other regions but not recognizing that we are regional artists ourselves in the United States. That's kind of poorly worded, but whatever. Ultimately, I think that's the message of Idol, is that they are K-pop artists, and you can call them that, but you can also call them many other things. They're proud of that part of themselves, but to define them as that would be to be missing the entirety of the picture. And that's something that happens with media a lot. We categorize things very easily, try to attribute things in nice little boxes without recognizing the big picture. Especially for something as gigantic as BTS is in terms of a worldwide movement, that's a huge mistake. Once you acknowledge that the things people think about K-pop... You know, I wonder, I think I would still probably classify them as K-pop as well because I think I'm of the mindset where the light airy music that has Korean origin, right, has some a lot of the songs that I've heard from them, I mean, there's some that are incredibly sad, like Spring Day, but a lot of them are, you know, light and airy, the ones that you hear on the mainstream radio or on Samsung commercials. <clears throat> a lot of them, I do classify them as straight up pop. And I think because of the origin, I would still classify it as K-pop. Now, I don't think that's like a, a hard set definition. I would just say, for example, when he's talking about how media tries to put them in nice little boxes, I think it's way more difficult for for the sake of conversation to address everything every single time when the most likely descriptor or category that most people could ident identify with and understand would be K-pop, right? Does that make sense? Hopefully I'm making sense. But I, I, can, I can see both sides. That's kind of what I'm getting at pop are not entirely true, you begin to see that the supposed separation between BTS and K-pop is not as drastic as one may think, while still being there to some degree. BTS mix elements of hip-hop, a black American genre, with indigenous Korean culture, like in their engendering of Han, a cultural emotional concept mm. unique to the Korean people that involves a feeling of Such a sad video. Damn. Their music blends the Korean Confucian elements of traditional Korean society, while also nailing elements of exploitation of Western cultural ideas and progressivism that marked the rise of Hollywood. This does not mean that BTS's successes, as so many in global media seem to indicate, can be attributed to the rise of K-pop. The rise of BTS and the rise of K-pop are distant cousins. BTS's rise, while related to Hollywood and K-pop's growing popularity, is its own unique story. K-pop makes sense as a categorization for BTS in terms of one of the elements of who they are, but it does not make sense as a brush to paint over BTS's story the same way one can brush over White Snake's success as being attributed to hair metal. <laughs> BTS elude categorization in a way perhaps unmatched throughout pop music history, and for that they do live in their own category. But that doesn't make them not a K-pop group. It doesn't mean that the K-pop category can't describe them just as the hip-hop category or the general pop category can at times. Additionally, while many See, Koreans will tell you that K-pop is not popular amongst adults in Korea and is not treated as a serious genre, that doesn't mean it isn't a serious genre. The rise of poptimism in American music criticism, while controversial for a number of reasons, does center around the reality that pop music is still a legitimate and investigatable form of music, even at its most saturated and commoditized. This is especially true of pop artists who explore the form through writing and producing, much like Taylor Swift, 
Kendrick Lamar, damn, is a pop album, and it slaps. Don't at me. Really? You think so? Okay, all right, wow. And of course, BTS. For years before the climate crisis comes to erase civilization, we will be Max. discussing BTS. We will be figuring out how to categorize them, failing, and then analyzing why we failed. And in the present tense, we have to continue to pressure Western media to cover BTS like the unique phenomenon that they are, not as the symptom of a viral wave or an inhumane industry or a sex fueled. Did the YouTuber Shane Dawson use K pop band BTS in his videos just for clickbait? I 100% understand the BTS fans being protected on that, but I don't know. I'm just going to show because I thought I was sticking up for the group, but I guess I didn't. All the background stuff, I never want uh, anyone feeling bad. It's never my goal with these videos. Isn't Shane Dawson canceled? Isn't he? I don't know. Craze, but as a unique, game changing group of artists. So much of the story of BTS is one of fighting K pop. From this, is, this is the video, this is the actual specific scene. I was like, oh yeah, they just killed him. They just lit him on fire. That's the end of BTS. And then everybody's like, no, that's actually like real fire. I was like, oh shit, go. Accusations <laughs> of faking sales numbers when their album eclipsed Big Bang's album in 2015 to dealing with waves of hateful fan comments you can probably find in videos that have the term BTS and hardship in the title. This Oof. extends to fighting the label of K-pop, a label so unfairly loaded it can instantly turn global audiences away. From conservative countries. By the way, I, I'm pretty sure that was a reference to XLS video, BTS hardships. Three boys in the south of the U.S. to the hyper-masculinist audiences from conservative countries in Latin America to the leftist communities appalled by the spooky K-pop industry. <laughs> that, by the way, is its own thing that we got to cover in a separate video. We forget often that neither BTS nor K-pop can be properly and unilaterally defined. They both wield complicated semiotic experiences. They not only symbolize so many things, but the things that they symbolize differ greatly from person to person. Yep. In studying BTS, we observe how a person or group of people's categorization can be theirs to champion or theirs to destroy. How your category can both be the thing you feel you are the least and the thing you feel you are the most. I said that in such a deep and cool <laughs> way. God bless me. God bless me. Acting like I'm a smart person. <laughs> Thanks to everyone for helping me out. Thanks to Motobora. Hey, thanks to my cat for the amazing support. I think she left. <laughs> uh, check out our other videos moving forward and uh, follow TY But Disagree on Twitter. I have been your host, Elliot Sang. If you have an opinion about there this, it is, you probably do. Let's wait in the end. Let's see. This, and you might be mad at me about what my opinion is. Um, Leave a comment. Be nice, but leave a comment. Or don't be nice. Fuck it. I can take it. Right, <laughs> boom there it is you know i think uh first of all round of applause baby gang mag fantastic job i think i think it's really hard to categorize an artist in one specific group because an artist is an artist right? a group of artists is going to be a group of artists and they're going to do what the art leads them to so i think it's really hard to take a definition that applies towards Again, I'm going to use the term artist across the board, but it's really hard to take one term and apply that to an artist and it be a definite, like a, an unwavering definition. You know what I mean? Because an artist can have different projects. So I think it's, it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, right? Are they K-pop? Yeah. Are they all K-pop? No. But most people call them K-pop? Yeah. Will most people understand what you mean when you call them K-pop? Kind of. You know what I mean? It's just not, it's not a, it's not a one word answer. It's so fluid. And I think that's what makes the entire thing such a, it's so fun to explore. You know what I mean? It's something to where it means what it means to you. And that should be all that it matters. It doesn't matter what it means to anybody else. It matters what it means to you. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, baby gang mag, give him some love links down below. Seriously, that was awesome. That was so well made. That was so well made. Excellent editing too. Excellent. Dude, fantastic. Uh, thank you for watching. Let me know your comments down below. I asked y'all a whole bunch of questions throughout. Let me know comments down below. Um, if you liked it, thumbs up. Um, I've been meaning to do this video for a while. And again, thank you, Baby Gang Mag, for giving me permission. I do have permission to do this, so much appreciated. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Um, but comments, make sure you thumbs up if you like it, and subscribe if you want to see some more. After you subscribe to Baby Gang Mag, Make sure you hit that button for me too. I, I would love you forever.
Lev. Mm. Um, everyone on Patreon, thank you so much for all your support. Want to join Patreon down below. And if you want to join Discord, I got a Discord as well. Um, well this video is already pretty long, so let y'all get back to it. Let y'all go watch another one of my videos. So I'm out of here. I love you guys. Thank you. Bye.